upper grade elementary STEM, redesigning a fountain. Um, this is one we did in my class, and you're going to see a video uh, that I've just kind of clipped together of some students presenting. One thing that I am a firm believer in, I can have a science lesson, and I may be a little bit different in this, and somebody here that's really knowledgeable would probably correct me, but I'm going to make the statement anyway. I don't think a science lesson is a STEM lesson. I don't think a math lesson is a STEM lesson. I think if I have science, technology, engineering, and math all in one, I have a STEM lesson. That's the way I approach it anyway. So I do science lessons all the time. I do math lessons all the time because I teach science and math. But I do an actual STEM lesson about once every nine weeks. And because I, I want them to have time to do something with it. And I can't do it every week. So about once every nine weeks. In fifth grade, there's a lot of us in fifth grade. We teach, um, describe factors that influence the rate at which different types of material freeze, melt, or evaporate. We teach um, in math. Read, write, and compare decimals to the thousandths, and to convert among different size standard measurement units within a given measurement system. So converting like five centimeters to five hundredths of a millimeter, and use those conversions in solving multi-step real-world problems. Um, also in science, we're also looking at like how surface area, and that's part of this, how surface area affects the rate that different, or that materials evaporate. So what I did is I told the kids, I said, okay, I've got a fountain in my yard. You know, one of those nice water fountains. I said, here's the problem. I'm busy. I don't always have time to go add water to that fountain. Well, the problem is the water evaporates and it burns my pump up. You know, if you guys have a water fountain in your yard, you're aware that you have to keep adding water to it or you're, you'll burn your pump up. I said, I want you to redesign my fountain. I want something that is not going to burn my pump up. So I started asking them, what, what are some things we need to think about to make a new fountain? And the kids said, you need to know what we're going to make it out of. Well, well, that's good. Why do we need to know that? Well, because metal gets hot faster. Plastic, it won't get hot so fast. I'm like, that's, that's a good theory. We probably should test that to see which material we want to use, right? And so we, and I asked, what else do you need to know? And they said, well, we also need to know, um, like, how big to make it, what shape to make it. And I started asking, now I had not taught this standard yet. I want you to know, I was teaching this standard through the lesson. And so, you know, I asked them, why would size of it matter? And they started thinking, they were like, well, water would evaporate faster, wouldn't it, if it was bigger? And somebody was like, no, as long as you just have a lot of water. And then, so, you know, the conversation kind of goes from there. So we decided, well, we need to test those things. The kids wrote what they were going to test. They, um, the, so the, STEM, the science part of that was they had to know surface area. The technology part of this was they had to put together a presentation because I was going to buy somebody's design, but you're going to have to give me a good presentation. And I told them, I said, you guys might come up with the right answer, but they might too. So you're going to have to present to me to convince me to go with your design over theirs because both of you could be right. So put it together in a PowerPoint and sound intelligent when you talk to me. Use nerd talk. Use your science words. Sound intelligent. And um, I offered, of course, to buy the winning team ice cream. 